Hi all, um, here begins our second video in this series of BNB chain development tutorial. In the last video we had a brief introduction to the BNB chain and today we will start talking about how to program smart contracts. This video will be about a detailed explanation and analysis to the EVM model so that you will understand better um, what is going on when we talk about um, implementation and all these um, in the Solidity language. And the next two videos, um, we will start discussing about the Solidity language, which you can use to program smart contracts. In this video, um, several concepts about the EVM model will be handled. First, basic concepts about accounts, transactions, and gas. Data access that you can do using storage, memory, and stack and uh, interacting between contracts, accounts, and the outer world using calls, logs, and how you can create and destruct contracts. The first is account. Accounts are basic components and module in the EVM of controlling. Every operation, transaction, calling, anything, happens under the control of a certain account. There are two types of accounts external accounts, which is controlled by the public-private key pairs, or contract accounts, controlled by the code stored together within the account. So external account basically is like um, any person's account inside the BNB chain. Could be you, could be me, anybody. And contract accounts stores the code of a smart contract, and this is where smart contracts um, live in. Accounts in the EVM model are represented and specified by their 160-bit address, which is basically uh, where these accounts live in. The address of the external account is determined from the public key, and the address of the contract is determined at the time the contract is created. We will see in detail how contract uh, account address um, is determined later. Regardless of the type of account, um, the two types are treated equally by the EVM. So when you want to program a smart contract that deal with accounts, you don't need to do special um, operations based on the type of account. You just perform because both are treated equally and the same by the Ethereum virtual machine. As we said, accounts are represented with the address of it, which is a 160-bit number. Every account has a persistent key value store, mapping 256-bit words to 256-bit words. And this is called storage. Um, we will talk about storage later again. Furthermore, every account has a balance, which can be modified by sending or receiving um, Ether. This is implemented through transactions. Transactions. Um, we did talk a little bit about transactions in the last video. It is basically um, messages that are broadcasting inside the network of a blockchain. So a transaction is a message that is sent from one account to another account. Um, note that this account could be the same or empty, so it can send either to itself. Um, sending to empty account means creating a contract, which we will discuss in the next slide. But for now, um, let's just refer to like random transactions now the general transactions inside transactions it can include binary data and assets the binary data is called um, payload um, we will probably referring to these different concepts um, in our future slides so make sure you understand what's going on and assets which basically means like you can store money and you can send money through um, transactions if the target account contains code, the code is executed and the payload is provided as the input data. For example, if a smart contract implemented a receive ether function, which is the function um, that should be executed when they receive a transaction that contains some assets, um, transacting to that account will trigger that function and uh, get that function executed. Now let's talk about what happens if transaction is applied to empty account. If the target account is not set, so it does not have a recipient or the recipient is set to null, 
then the transaction will create a new contract. The address of that contract is an address derived from the sender and its number of transactions sent. Um, this number is referred to as nouns. The payload of such a contract creation transaction is taken to be EVM bytecode and executed. The output data of this execution is permanently stored as the code of the contract. Note that this means in order to create a contract, you do not send the actual code of the contract. Instead, you should send a code that upon execution will return the code of the contract you expect. This is a bit complex. I will say that again. In order to create a contract, you do not send the actual code. Instead, you send the code and the code you send after executed should return the code of the contract. Another note is, is that because of this, when a contract is being created, its code is still empty because it's waiting for its constructor to finish and return the code. Because of this, you should not call back into the contract under construction until this constructor has finished executing. This is how a smart contract is created. Next, gas. Each transaction is charged with a certain amount of gas. Um, basically money, native assets in this blockchain. And the purpose of charging is to limit the amount of work that is needed to execute the transaction and to pay for this transaction at the same time. Um, when EVM executes the transaction, the gas is gradually depleted, so it's not removed instantly. Rather, um, if you pay too much, it will return to the um, account in the same way. Um, if you pay too little, the gas is used up, then you trigger an out of gas exception and it, this will revert all modifications made to the state. This means that in EVM model, execution, transaction are atomic. That means either the whole process is getting executed or none of the process. So you, you won't see like a part of a transaction, a part of function getting executed if an exception is triggered. Um, we will encounter this feature again in later discussion. This is designed in this way in order to achieve better safety um, and to make sure that people don't get messed up um, inside transactions or having or handling exceptions. Also, um, the guest press is uh, set by the creator of the transaction. So after setting guest price, um, he will pay guest price multiplied guests upfront from the sending account. If you set in gas price too low, then probably the miner is less eager to um, broadcast your transaction, which may cause your transaction to wait for very long or even fail to be verified. So setting gas price accordingly and um, um, properly um, is important to make sure transactions are successful. Next, we can talk about how data is stored and accessed in the EVM model. There are three ways of storing and accessing data, storage, memory, and stack. As we have said before, storage is a um, feature and a part that each account has one. It is persistent between function calls and transactions. Storage um, is a key value. Maps 256-bit word to 256-bit words. The problem with storage is that it is costly to read in contract. It is probably even more costly in modifying and initializing storage. So in order not to pay much, you should try to minimize access to storage. And what you can do is probably store data like derived calculation, caching, aggregates outside of the contract so that you don't need to um, access the storage quite often and pay a lot for that. Note that a contract can neither read nor write to any storage apart from its own. So this is private um, for each contract. Next is memory. So a contract will obtain a freshly cleared memory for each message call. What is message call we were just about to see. Um, but you can imagine it as like any time it is executed um, when somebody calls it. So this is something temporary and is cleared. It is initialized anytime it is called. 
memory is linear and can be addressed at bit level, but reads are limited to a width of 256 bits, while writes can be either 8 bits or um, 256 bits. Memory is expanded by a word, like a word means 256 bit, when accessing um, a previously untouched memory word. It could be like reading or writing. So um, the size of memory will be a multiple of 256 bit. At the time of expansion, the cost in gas must be paid. Um, expanding memory will get more costly when the memory is larger. So it scales quadratically, uh, actually. Finally, stack. Um, this is not specific to, to like any account, but um, to the whole machine or to the whole um, working environment. The EVM is not designed as a register machine. It is designed as a stack machine. So all computation are performed on the data area called stack. It has a maximum size of 124 elements and contain words of 256 bits. Um, access to the stack is limited to the top end in the following way. It is possible to copy one of the topmost 16 elements to the top of the stack or swap the topmost element with one of the top 16 um, elements below it. All other operations will take the topmost two or one or more, depending on the operation, like, like plus or, or call or anything, um, depending on the operation. So it takes the topmost elements from the stack and push the results back to the stack. Um, of course, it is possible to move stack elements to storage or memory in order to get deeper access to the stack, but it is not possible to just access arbitrary elements deeper in the stack without first moving the top of the stack. Um, these three are basically ways um, the data are stored and accessed in the EVM. Um, in creating smart contracts and uh, sp um, storing stuff, you can declare whether to store it in memory or storage, and that will um, affect the, the cost and the effect of a smart contract. Next, we will talk about interaction between contracts um, accounts and outer world. So first is uh, message calls. Contracts can call other contracts or send ether to non-contract account by the means of message calls. Uh, message calls are quite similar to transactions in the sense that they have source, a target, data payload, ether, gas, and uh, return data. A contract can decide how much gas to be sent within the inner message call. Similar to transaction, if an out of gas exception happens in the inner call, um, this will be signaled by an error value um, put onto the stack, and everything will be reverted. The con contract receives a cleared memory and has access to the call payload, um, referred to as call data. So this is what we have discussed just now. Memory is cleared and initialized anytime it is called. Um, and is not permanent across function and message calls. Upon finish, um, it will return data, which will be stored at a location in the caller's memory pre-allocated by the caller. All such calls are fully synchronized. Calls are limited to a depth of uh, 1,024, um, which means that for more complex operations, loops should actually be preferred over recursive calls. Furthermore, only 63 over 64th of the gas can be forwarded in a message call, which actually costs the depth limit to a little less than a thousand in practice. So make sure that you don't generate like long recursive calls, because unlike performing normal programming languages or normal programs, these message calls is actually costing money, so um, prefer using um, loops um, instead of recursive calls. There is a variant um, of the message call called delegate call. It is identical to message call apart from the fact that the code at the target address 
is executed in the context of the calling contract. Um, th that means like you, you ha um, the, the, the current address balance storage, all these are still referring to the calling contract, um, but the code is taken from the call address. Um, this is mean by the context. Um, also, message.sender and message.value uh, do not change their values. These two are a predefined variable that memorizes and stores the information of a message call. The existence of delegate call makes it possible to implement library feature and solidity. Um, so you can reuse library code um, that can be applied to a contract storage, to many contract storage just by using delegate calls um, instead of doing real calls. Next is the uh, logs. Um, log is basically um, memorizing um, related information that you want to show or um, show to the user what is going on. Um, it is possible to store data and especially index data structure that maps all the way up to the block level. So logs can be accessed directly to the block uh, directly at the block level. It is used by Solidity in order to implement um, events. Contracts cannot access log data after it has been created, but they can effectively um, access from outside the blockchain. So contracts, you don't you don't read log data. Um, although you can emit log, uh, emit events, and logs are seen outside the blockchain by an external world. Like you can you can see what is going on um, with your smart contract. Is it acting as expected? So this is for interacting and sending information to the outside world of blockchain. Finally, we will talk about creating and destructing contracts. Um, aside from sending transactions to an empty address, contracts can create other contracts using a special opcode. Um, in this case, creators receive the address of the new contract on the stack um, instead of the, the normal way where the, the new address is derived using the information when you are performing creating operations through transaction to empty addresses. For a contract to be destructed, the only way to remove code from the blockchain um, is when the contract at this address performs self-destruct operation. So you cannot delete a contract unless it deletes itself. The remaining ether stored at that address is sent to a designated target when performing this operation and then the storage and code is removed from the state. Notice that if somebody sends Ether to remove contracts, the Ether is forever lost. You can't retrieve it back and it won't like mm, send it back to you because that function, um, that address can do nothing when receive Ether because it is an empty place. That is pretty much all for today, um, in which we discussed uh, several concepts and the structure of the Ethereum virtual machine model architecture. Um, with the knowledge of uh, this model, we can start talking about how to program a smart contract using the language called Solidity. So see you in the next video.